Hi, I'm Tinny from Mini Bull Design, and this behind me is my Velo Mobile I'm building. Uh, <clears throat> I learned a lot on this. This is my first Velo Mobile, my third tricycle, and this is the first one with a body on it. And I learned a lot about it, and one of the main things I learned was that Velo Mobiles are inherently heavy. I thought this one was uh, unbelievably heavy because it weighs about 90 pounds, but uh, after going on the internet and looking at uh, several other models that are very popular, I found out that 85 pounds is not unheard of. In fact, most of them are around 85 pounds. So this is right on the mark, and I didn't build it out of anything exotic. Uh, to give you an idea what it's built out of, uh, the framework, the skeleton, all the round bulkheads that uh, the long runs go on, uh, is made out of uh, steel tubing from a uh, folding chair. There's two pieces on every chair on the very back that the arms slide on that are about, well, I don't know, four feet long around that, and they don't have any holes in them. So on my tubing bender, uh, you can't have holes because you do it just fatigue. But so I've got dozens of those chairs, and I took those pieces out and I could fold those for the long uh, sections and, and use them, and it worked great. Uh, a little bit heavy, but extremely strong. Now, this whole structure is, <clears throat> is steel framework, and this is a steel framework. There's a complete steel framework everywhere, here, here, and here. That this aluminum is stretched over, and then the aluminum, the aluminum is pop riveted to the steel frame. Uh, the duct tape is just to cover up the edges of the aluminum because it was sharp. And <clears throat> I've ordered eight more rolls of uh, uh, Island Lime duct tape. And when I get it, uh, I will completely cover all this aluminum in Island Lime. And all this blue duct tape that you see will be covered. Uh, the nose will be covered uh, in Island Lime. And I'll finish covering the other side and the bottom. So it will be completely Island Lime. Then if uh, if it turns out to be a good performer, I'm going to put some accent stripes on it, maybe pink and black or whatever. I'm not sure yet. But it's going to prove itself first, and, and that's going to be a long, slow learning curve. I'm sure I'm going to have to vent this in some places, change the gear ratios around, and do a lot of things to make it comfortable and uh, a performer. Now, as far as the uh, 85, 90 pounds goes, that's a liability going uphill. But ironically, <laughs> on downhill, it's a plus, because when you're going downhill, you're powered by your pedaling and by gravity, and the heavier it is, the more the gravity will pull it downhill, and the faster it'll go. So, uh, this should be a real performer once I get it up to speed, if I keep it up to speed and keep it rolling. I'm looking for speeds of maybe 25, 30 miles an hour, which is in something three inches off the ground. It's just absolutely screaming. Now the seat in this, I, I lay way back. I've got this way back. This is the most lean back one I've made. I'm back at like, you know, 30 degrees, laying right down, and I've got a shoulder rest and a head rest. So I'm tucked right in tight, but I have a lot of room up front in the pedal cage uh, to uh, pedal and be very free, and my knees have plenty of room. That's one reason why there's a rise right here is because uh, to give me more room for my knees, because Although the pedal cage is here, your knees rise up right here just a little bit. So I've got plenty of room for my pedals. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but I think in the end what I'm going to end up doing is building another one of these, maybe two or three more, and each one will be lighter. I've already come up with a way, I think, to shave an enormous amount of weight off of it. So this is going to end up being the heaviest valve mobile that I make. And what I'm thinking of doing is buying a uh, 2,000-watt bicycle, electric uh, bicycle hub, and putting it in the rear, and putting two or three battery packs in it, and turning it electric. And I still, that way, if, if you go like the uh, the Bionics, you can have that hub in there, and have a seven-speed cluster in the back, Shimano cluster, so you can pedal at the same time, or not pedal at all. And as long as you do that, it's classified as a bicycle, and you don't have to license it or anything. And you can run the motor and pedal at the same time, and assist, or you can go just with, with the uh, electric. So that's probably where this will end up, and the next one will be 20 pounds lighter, hopefully. Now, uh, very quickly, I'd like to uh, 
touch on electric cars in general and give you my spin on them. I've been looking at the, the, the Prius, and bottom line on the Prius is, from the people I've talked to that own them, they advertise them, you know, to get up to 60 miles a gallon, but everybody that has one and drives it, you know, somewhat normal, gets like 25 to 35. They don't get 60. So it's a, it's a really poor attempt at an electric car. They call it a hybrid. It's basically just a gasoline car that drives... Uh, electric motors on the wheels instead of a transmission. And uh, the Chevy Volt, uh, another very weak, poor, from the numbers I've seen on it, it plugs in, but it gets like, under ideal conditions, they say you could get 40, so you know just as well as I do, you're going to get 15 or 20 miles of usable uh, power out of it, and after that, it's going to suck. So, and it's, it's heavy, it weighs a million pounds, and it's got a a mediocre 700 pound battery pack in it that's it's just a very very weak attempt at electric car and I think uh, you know it's just a waste of time $34,000 yeah right it's it's just a really really bad example of what General Motors could be capable of if they tapped the leading edge of uh, technology which they didn't they stayed pretty safe on that one and touching back on the Prius just to prove to you what a bad example Prius is, they, they don't come with a plug-in, with a charger so you can plug them in. Now think about that for a minute. It would cost an extra two to three hundred dollars to sell them with a plug-in option, and they don't sell them with a plug-in option. That's because the oil companies got right a hold of their gonads, squeezing them hard. Don't you guys dare to make an electric car that doesn't burn gas. We'll squeeze you so hard, we'll make you... You know, they got right a hold of them hard. That's the reason why the Prius sucks and why the Chevy Volt sucks. What the world's looking for is a totally electric car with no gasoline engine, a small, lightweight car like a Ford Fiesta or Festiva with just nickel metal hydride batteries low in the body, something that will get 75 or 100 miles on a charge, something that has moderate performance, uh, and it's small and super lightweight. You know, a real, actual plug-in electric car that's small and lightweight, the way they're supposed to be. The average person only drives 30, 40 miles a day. If you had a small electric car that plugged in and would do 75 or 100 miles and could go, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour, you couldn't sell enough of them. But the oil company got right a hold of them gonads. You guys ain't building nothing like that. We'll just squeeze you so hard you'll wish you'd never been born. That's what I think of the oil company. And I know, just from looking at what people have done, that the technology has been there for years. It's not a problem at all to build a small, light car. You can even use aluminum in the body panels. Not a problem at all. Nobody's building one, are they? Yeah. Thank you, oil company. <laughs> I'm Kenny. Have a great day.